Gran Colombia was one of the great states that gained independence from the Spanish when their intercontinental empire was falling apart. In the early 1800s, the Spanish buyers' royalties in the Americas had seen discontent rise increasingly in their populations, as the people from all parts of society, from Sonora to La Plata, had been influenced by the American Revolution into supporting the idea of independence from Spain. The spread of the independence movements was simultaneous to the Spanish crown being absolutely crushed by the French Emperor of Napoleon in Europe. This led the colonies to gain more autonomy, starting to trade between each other more than with the mainland. Furthermore, the new constitutions Spain had been passing in Europe under Napoleon's rule were not being recognized to their fullest extent in the Americas, which led to further disagreements between Spain and its American colonies. These independent movements were even supported by the British Empire, that wanted to end Spain's legal monopoly in trade relations with their colonies. All these factors combined resulted in a series of independence declarations and wars that ravaged northern South America from 1808 to 1825. One of the first to rebel was the colony of New Granada. In 1819, a man by the name of Simon Bolivar, who had been working since 1811 to liberate the American viceroyalties from the Spanish Empire and had succeeded in establishing an independent Republic of Venezuela, participated in the Congress of Angostura, where he laid the foundation for the new and independent New Granada. This new country would be formed after the Constitution of Colombia would make her unite with the already independent Venezuela and Quito, modern-day Ecuador. In 1821, the Constitution of Cucuta would be instituted, which would formalize this union, now called the Republic of Colombia, although historians call it Gran Colombia, to divide it from the modern-day Republic of Colombia. Simon Bolivar was elected president and Francisco de Paula Santander became vice president. Despite this, the war with the Spanish raged on, only ending in 1822 when Spanish troops were forced to leave the country for good. Peace was secured for this new free state. Now came the issue of organization. Many thought that the best way for Gran Colombia to operate was for a federal government, where the vastly different parts of the country would work together while maintaining their relative autonomy. This method was preferred by the Vice President Santander, while others, such as Bolivar himself, preferred the idea of a strong and authoritarian central government that would avoid the possibility of parts of Gran Colombia seeking further separation from the rest of the country. Initially, the first government Gran Colombia had was the one fully under the control of Bolivar, making the country a centralized republic that used its post-independence war army to continue fighting the Spanish in the other South American countries still under the Spanish yoke. Such is the case for Peru, that was liberated through Gran Colombia's help in 1824. This wasn't seen in good light by the pro-federalist parts of the country. In fact, while the war against the Spanish had for a long time helped the people of Gran Colombia look past the country's diversity in order to unite against a common foe, now that the war was over, the large differences that the regions of the countries had between each other were starting to show their salts quite evidently. In the area that makes up modern Ecuador, the main issue was the one about the textile industry, which contributed to most of the region's economy, but that, through the government's decision to import cheaper textiles, had suffered immensely, impoverishing the region. On the other side of the country, in modern-day Venezuela, the government had adopted low-tariff policy, which benefited the agriculture of the region, but made it harder for it to industrialize, leaving it behind compared to Colombia proper. All of these internal issues resulted in Venezuela, the department where the federalist support was strongest, electing Commandant General Jose Antonio Paez, who was fiercely opposed to the central governments. When signs of pro-secession talks were discovered by the central government of Gran Colombia, Paez was forced to resign. The resignation lasted only two days though, because Paez, along with many of his supporters, decided that Venezuela had no place in a centralized Gran Colombia, 
so they held two assemblies to discuss the future of the region while not declaring formal independence to ensure their safety. Despite this, Bolivar, already observing some skirmishes in southern Venezuela, was prepared to march the army into the region to get it back into Gran Colombia through force. At the same time, the statements from the departments of Quito and Guayaquil in support for Paez made it seem that Gran Colombia was going to descend in civil war. But, strangely enough, the entire situation de-escalated after Bolivar offered amnesty to the pro Paez federalists in exchange for loyalty until the next constituent assembly and he offered some minimal reforms to keep the regions from revolting again. This strangely seemed to work for the time. Both 1826 and 1827 went by without major rebellions or disagreements, and the economy of the country started relatively improving, but this wasn't enough to calm the Federalists down. In 1828, the new constituent assembly called the Convention of Ocaña was held. In this occasion, Bolivar had planned for the new constitution but granted some lesser freedoms similarly to the constitution of Bolivia. But this was to no avail. Both Santander and Paez refused anything else than a federalist constitution, and this caused the pro-Bolivar delegates to walk out of the convention. This was the last straw for the fragile stability of Gran Colombia. Bolivar had now decided to attempt centralizing all constitutional powers upon himself, to stop the Federalists from winning and to keep the country together. But this only enraged Paez and Santander, that refused to cooperate with him in any way, effectively blocking the administration of the country. As time passed, Bolivar's health worsened, so, without seeing any way to fix the situation, and with the population losing trust in him, he resigned in 1830. This de facto broke the country, and Venezuela was fast to take the opportunity, holding another constituent congress that declared José Antonio Paez as president of a newly independent Venezuela in September 22 of 1830. This was quickly followed by Ecuador's declaration of independence and constitution, with Juan José Flores as their president. Finally, on December the 17th, with the dreams of a united Gran Colombia gone, and the state of the last remaining part of Colombia being of turmoil and dissolution, Bolivar died in his bed at the age of 47. Thanks for watching this video. Were you interested in the story of Gran Colombia? Do you think Bolivar could have succeeded in keeping it together if he acted differently? Let me know in the comments. And as always, see you in the next video.